Hi everybody, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, just a quick few things that I want to go over before we get into today's story time. Yes, I'm wearing a shirt with stains on it. Um, I washed them with brown cargo pants and now they are, this is just ruined forever now. No, but that wasn't the main point. Um, so a lot of you have been saying that the story time submission sheet isn't working. So my team and I are working on that right now and I should have a new one up soon. And what I'll do is I'll just replace the old link on this video with the new one. So if you guys are wanting to send in your story time, um, just be a little bit patient and this should be all cleared up by Monday at least second of all um if you guys didn't see i uploaded a confirmation of all my tiktok story times um like five hours and 47 minutes long so if you need something to keep you occupied for a few hours you can go watch that i know you guys probably saw it and you were like this bitch just uploaded this and she's probably not gonna upload anything this week like what the fuck um no we have a story time. Don't worry. But other than that, I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Okay, so before we get into today's story time, I'm going to do my quick usual little rundown. For most of the video, I will be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times in a first person point of view, so if you don't like that, then you can leave. There's the door. There's the door, bitch! And these story times are sent in by anonymous people. By the way, if there's background noise, it's because there's like 30 kids running around outside of the pool and screaming. So yeah, but um, today I have a very juicy story time for you guys. So grab the popcorn, go grab your homework, go do the dishes, grab your fucking laundry, whatever you need to do and try to keep up because this one is a wild one. Or you might hear my dog snoring in the background. Oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> then again, sometimes I just have to like adjust his head for him, but Let's get into today's story time. So story time about how my mom did the nasty with my best friend who was also my crush. So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school, but per usual, we are going to go all the way back to the beginning. So my mom and dad started dating whenever my mom was 17 and my dad was 20. And if you ask anybody, they were literally the cutest couple. Everybody wished that their relationship was exactly like theirs. Um, every girl wanted a guy like my dad. He was probably one of the best guys out there, still is. Like he would do anything for my mom. And when I say anything, I mean anything. So anyways, like I said, they start dating. Fast forward to whenever my mom is 20, my dad's 23. They decided that they wanted a kid and then bam, nine months later, my mom popped me out. And while my grandparents were not too happy about this, you know, them not being married and having a child, yeah. Um, you know, so they got married. It was a really beautiful wedding, at least from what people had told me, because I'm literally like four months old. For all I know, they could have got married in the fucking hood. I don't know. Well, everything was good probably up until around two years later when my dad broke up with my mom because he found out that she was cheating on him with his best friend, who was also his best man at the wedding. Emotional, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. Um, but yeah, I guess they started hooking up like two months after the wedding and my dad found out because he went out with his friends the one night and my dad hadn't been out with his friends in a while. You know, he had a baby, me, and he had a family to take care of, AKA my mom. But yeah, like I said, he went out with his friends for the first time in a while and the best man who we're gonna call Eric. Um, Eric was pissing off like their whole friend group that night, including my dad. So one of the guys in the friend group tells Eric to calm down. And then Eric literally tries to fight all of them, every single one of them. So that's when one of my dad's friends was like, you know what, I don't even give a fuck anymore. He's been fucking your wife. Like what the fuck? First of all, good on you for telling him. Second of all, shame on all of you for being fake ass fucking friends, okay? Okay. Like that is so fucked. Like if you are really my friend, why wouldn't you tell me? Cause at that point you just look fake. I don't care about the, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. No, not an excuse. But yeah, my dad asked why they never told him and they pretty much were like, oh, we don't want to break up the friend group. Anyway, so yeah, my mom cheated on my dad with the best man. So my dad broke up with her and for the next, 
four years, I want to say, they were on and off 24 fucking seven. And I know y'all are probably thinking, oh, you know, like on and off, I know that, you know, breaking up, not breaking up, you know? No, listen, when I say on and off, I mean like the most toxic on and off there is. I'm talking, my dad had moved in with um my grandpa, so he wasn't living in the house anymore. Every week, he would bring all of his boxes over to the house, unpack, pack them up at the end of the week, move back. It, it was just an on and off fucking thing, literally. And I know you guys are thinking, well, why didn't your dad just divorce her? Well, he didn't want to divorce her because in the end, he wanted things to work out. It's like one of those things where you break up with your significant other, but in the end, you're still hoping you can fix things. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about, where you break up with them, but you hope that they'll come back and realize that they did you wrong and they'll be better for you this time. That's where my dad was. So yeah, like I said, next four years, complete shit show. They were fighting over who was gonna take me what day. They were going on dates with one each other. They were going on dates with one another's friends to make each other jealous. But eventually, finally in the end, they decided that they wanted to be together and they wanted to fix things. Because, you know, both of my parents were raised in um, households where both of the parents were together. So they didn't want me to go without having both of my parents in my life together. Y'all are, listen, I know that it's like, you know, you wanna make it work for the kids, but at the same time, like, fuck the kids. For real, that is how I feel. I am not staying for no none of that. Oh my God, absolutely not. But you know what? To each their own. I teach their own. Teach their own. We don't judge. I'm just saying me personally. That's my opinion. We're not judging. This is a safe space. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. Okay. Okay. So fast forward to whenever I was eight years old, I had a crush on this boy who we're gonna call Brent. And I'm not gonna lie, at this age, I was very socially awkward, okay? And I know you guys are probably thinking, well, every eight year old is fucking socially awkward. You're like eight, the fuck? No, I mean, I was especially like very, very, very awkward and weird. I think most of it though was like, I had really bad social anxiety. Like I had a really hard time making friends and I had never really been around any other kids my age. So I didn't really know how to communicate with my peers. Like I was never put in daycare. I never had any other friends to hang out with, you know? And my mom homeschooled me until I was eight. So yeah, I didn't really get those initial few years. Anyway, so my eight year old self who had this crush was trying to find some way to talk to this boy. And for some reason, um, my eight year old self thought the best way to talk to him would be to annoy the fuck out of this kid. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. It's like one of those things where they say like, um, you know, boys will make fun of you when they like you. Well, that was me. I was making fun of him because I liked him. Um, but yeah, for example, um, a few kids and I were on the castle playground thing right next to that swirly stripper pole looking shit that you slide down. And I was like, oh, you're too scared to go down, Brent. Da 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 da. Like you won't do it. And then what does this motherfucker do? Um, bitch, this little twat says, you're the one who's scared and then pushes me, pushes me off the fucking ledge. Now what happens? I smack my head off of the metal and then I smack like my mouth off another bar. Yeah, double homicide. Um, I literally ended up swallowing one of my teeth. Just fucking knock my teeth out. And it was my front tooth, so that shit was missing for a fucking while. Now, I feel like this is where everything started to go to shit in my life. So this is where y'all need to keep up, okay? Okay. So my mom and dad pick me up from school and they take me to the hospital. I ended up having a concussion, which I'm not gonna lie, probably made me even more socially awkward. So thanks, Brent. But Miss Weber, who is Brent's mom and Brent ended up visiting me while I was in the hospital. And he brought me some flowers, which was so cute. Totally forgot the fact that he literally just gave me a concussion and knocked my front tooth out. Um, but yeah, she like forced him to apologize to me. I wanna apologize to all of you for what I did. It was very wrong and I am very sorry. And I hope this apology impresses you even though my grandmother made me do it and I don't really mean it. But yeah, he apologized for pushing me off the playground, 
knocking my front tooth out, giving me a concussion. So of course I forgive him. So a few days after I got out of the hospital, Miss Weber took me to Mr. Weber, who was a dentist, because she felt extremely bad about what happened to me. She was like, don't worry, you know, my husband's gonna take good care of you. He's gonna get you all fixed up, which I don't know fixed up about what, like bitch, my tooth is gone. Unless you're digging it out of my shit, then how are we getting that back? We're not. But yeah, and he was doing it for free. So you already knew my mom and dad were not about to pass that shit up. Well, while I was in the dentist's office, I went there with my mom. And of course she was in the room with me. Majority of the appointment was just her and Mr. Weber talking the whole time. Like we were literally there for two hours just because they were talking. And I know this is about to sound dramatic as fuck, but I literally would go to the dentist two times a week, every week for two years straight. And every time we were there, we would spend an hour there. And this wasn't even like waiting in the waiting office. I didn't have no fucking gingivitis, no gum disease, no teeth diseases or anything. He would check my teeth, which took, it took like five minutes. Now that I'm older, I literally realized that he would just go like this, you know, like check my teeth, look at them. He'd be like, oh, they look great. Here, use this mouthwash and get a free toothbrush. And then what would happen? I would go sit in the waiting room for literally like 45 minutes while him and my mom would talk, you know, talk. Yeah, okay. I'm in here for five hours. Learned that fucking stupid shit. I'll be here another five hours. And nobody ever questioned it though because he owned, like, that was his practice. I, I think that's the right way of saying it. Like, he owned his own dentist's office, you know? Well, during those two years, I had also became best friends with Brent. We would hang out almost every day after school at each other's houses. We would have our parents sign us up for the same activities in and out of school. And since my mom was a teacher and Brent's mom was a principal, even though they worked at the high school, they knew a bunch of teachers in the elementary school. So they were able to get us into all of the same classes and stuff, which was so nice because I had my best friend in every single fucking class, period. So fast forward through the next two years, I am 10 years old and this is where shit really went south, I would say. Well, not really, but this is the beginning of the shit storm, okay? So I was still having my dentist appointments, like I said, two times a week, every week. And the one week my mom's car was in the shop because someone had wrecked into us. And it's funny how life works, you know? Like, I don't know about anybody else, but I am one of those people that finds out everything even when I'm not looking for anything it just comes to me I'm very spiritual and shit so I feel like you know God will you know show me the truth about things so yeah I just think it's funny how the universe works in those ways but this is one of those times where it was working in my dad's favor like I said um someone wrecked into her car and my dad became our personal uber driver he was literally taking us everywhere picking us up dropping us off da -da -da, everything else under the sun except for when I would go to the dentist yes mm -hmm. that was the only time that he wouldn't pick us up he would drop us off but my grandma, my mom's mom, would come and pick us up from the dentist. And my grandma knew what was going on the whole fucking time. She just never said anything because she didn't want to get involved in the bullshit. Not only that, but if you called my mom out on something that she did that was wrong, she would literally bite your head off. Like somehow in the end, it would lead to you apologizing even though you did nothing wrong. Like her manipulation skills were top tier. Like they were just chef's kiss which is awful so anyways um my dad drops us off at the dentist and my dad did get sus i know you guys are probably thinking well didn't your dad get suspicious throughout the two years yes he absolutely got fucking suspicious but then my mom and mr weber came up with um something saying that like i had i don't even know what the fuck it was i was too young to remember but they said that i had something wrong and i needed to do these annual these checkups not even annual no these two times a week checkups. And you know, since a, a dentist who actually went to school for the shit told my dad, he was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And he knew that Mr. Weber was married. So he really just trusted him and my mom, which it sucks whenever you give somebody a second chance and then you, they just screw you over again. So yeah, um, while we are at my dentist appointment, my grandma tries texting my mom to tell her that she couldn't pick us up, which totally off topic, but my grandma was like a real cat lady. Okay, she had 
a fuck ton of cats, all right? I wanna say she had like 13. But she would let the cats outside so that way they could lay on the patio because she had um, like a fence around it. And the cats had no desire to go anywhere else but just lay on the patio in a sunspot. So um, the neighbor's dog jumped over the fence, literally almost took the head off of one of the cats. So she had to go to the vet immediately. So yeah, that was a quick side story of why my grandma couldn't pick us up, okay? And since my mom wasn't answering the fucking phone, she had to text my dad because what else was she gonna do? She was like, hey, Anthony, um, I'm not gonna be able to pick them up from the dentist today. This is what happened, blah, 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 sorry. So my dad texted my mom, he tries calling my mom, and somehow she didn't get any of these texts or voicemails that anybody left her. Like, what if I died or something? Like, mom, answer the fucking phone. Like, it's your fault you got caught, you dumb bitch. Be so for real. Anyway, so my dad shows up at the office and he sees that I'm sitting in the waiting room, which by the way, my dad didn't find it sus that my grandma would pick us up from the dentist's office because he had work later on in the day. So he really couldn't come and pick us up. Like it had to be nobody else could come and get us for him to actually come and pick us up. So anyways, he walks in and he sees me sitting out in the waiting room and he's like, hey, where's mom? And I'm like, oh, she's still in the room talking to Mr. Weber. And my dad was like, all right, well, we need to hurry up because I have to get back to work. So my dad goes into the back and the receptionist tries to stop him. She's like, hey, you can't go in there, da da da. He's with a patient and he's like, he's talking to my wife, I can go in the fucking room. So he opens the door and what is going on in there? What do you think is going on in there? Yep, they are doing the nasty. So obviously my dad starts flipping the flying fuck out. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, he was mad as a motherfucker. That makes sense. <laughs> and he ends up beating the shit out of Mr. Weber. <laughs> while he's screaming at my mom. And I'm crying. So one of the nice ladies who was waiting in the office with me, she took me outside so that way I wouldn't have to hear all the yelling and screaming. Well, um, my dad gave a really brutal ass beating to Mr. Weber because Mr. Weber literally could not get up. Like he was just so stunned. Definitely probably had some brain damage, but um, it was to the point where they either needed to call an ambulance or Miss Weber needed to come and pick him up and take him to the hospital. So I go back into the office, you know, I'm sitting there with my dad waiting for my mom to put her fucking clothes back on. And we hear the receptionist call Miss Weber and she says, hey, Miss Weber, um, your husband got into a physical altercation with one of his patients. So either we can call an ambulance to take him to the hospital or you can pick him up and take him yourself. So Miss Weber shows up and she's like, who the hell did this to him? And my dad, he stands up and he's like, me. And she's like, what the fuck? Why? Why did you fucking beat the shit out of my husband, huh? And he's like, listen, Miss Weber, I know you're probably not gonna wanna hear this, but my wife and your husband have been fucking for God knew, knows however long. And she was like, that's not possible. He comes to work and he goes home straight after. Dumbass bitch. And my dad's like, well, my wife has been coming here for two times a week, every week, for two years straight. So you do the math. So then my mom storms out of the office like she's the one who's not in the wrong. Like it's my dad's fault for catching her. She calls my grandma, flipping the fuck out. She's like telling her that she's a piece of shit. She's a terrible mother and she just ruined two families. Now her daughter is gonna have to grow up in a broken home. Be fucking for real. Like sis, come on. You know that is not her fault. Let's be an adult and take some accountability, okay? Okay, let's not do that. No, 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 no. Shame on you. Now after this, as you could probably guess, my dad left my mom because surprisingly, my mom decided that she wanted to be honest. Yes, she wanted to be honest with him. He asked her, he was like, so how long has this been going on? And she goes, it started right after the first appointment. So for two years. Sis couldn't even give it like a few months or anything. Like they got active right away. So at this point, Miss Weber decides that it would probably be best for Brett and I not to see each other anymore. Like she literally took him out of school and enrolled him in a school that was an hour outside of town. Like she would drive an hour back and forth just to make sure that him and I did not see each other. And obviously I'm 10 years old, so it's not like I can sit there and be like, hey, give me your Snapchat, give me your phone number. No, it didn't work like that. So you can imagine how upset I was, my best friend, and I just can't even speak anymore because of my mom. And because of this, I had a lot of hatred 
hatred towards my mother. So because of this, I decided that I wanted to spend majority of the time with my dad instead of my mom. Besides, she needed to figure her shit out. Like, you're a grown adult, do better. Do fucking better. So yeah, I would stay with my dad throughout the week and then on the weekends, I would go to my mom's. And I think for like the first month, I would go to my mom's house and just not talk to her. I literally would sit there on the couch, just with my arms crossed. Like sometimes she would even just call my dad to come back and pick me up because I wouldn't speak to her for obvious reasons, of course. Now I know you guys are probably thinking, well, this shouldn't really affect you too bad. Since you're so young, none of your peers should even know about this. Well, think again, think again. Because I lived in a small town and almost everybody's parents found out about it. And then of course they tell their kids to stay away from me because of my mom, um, especially the wives who didn't want my mom to come after their man next. So fast forward four years, I am 14 years old and a freshman in high school. And you know, as soon as I thought that I, you know, got over the whole situation that happened with my mom and shit, like I finally thought that I caught a break, I didn't. Like there was no escaping this whole situation because now I was in school where my mom was a teacher and Brent's mom was a principal. Like fuck my life. So of course the rumors started circling around again. I had people calling me a slut because of my mom. It got to the point where I literally went to the guidance counselor about it and told her what people were saying about me, which I never did even whenever I was a kid and these rumors were circulating and kids were saying that they didn't want to play with me because of my mom and shit like that. And do you want to know what the guidance counselor said to me? Do you want to know what she said? She literally said to me that my mom's actions caused all of this. So I should be mad at her, not everybody else. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like schools are no fucking help. Like y'all don't do shit. Y'all do not do shit. Like blame the kid. Okay. I mean, I guess in a way she was right. I should be mad at my mom, not everybody else, but still, fuck you. In all seriousness though, like schools don't really do shit most of the time, nothing. Anyway, so um, school had started on like September 12th and after the first week, the rumors died down. Thankfully, everybody was more worried about the bitch Avery who sent nudes to her boyfriend's best friend and then he sent them around. Like Avery, I am so fucking sorry that happened to you but thank you thank you so much because finally everybody's attention was off of me and on to her so i want to say about a month after school started i got to school in the morning and i'm walking to my locker and as i'm walking i see brent out of the corner of my eye and i had to do a double take okay because i was fucking shook i was like hold on a minute oh my god that's the love of my life oh my god like y'all don't know how happy I was to see that man. So I like turned around, ran up to him, gave him a big hug and I was so happy because at this point I really thought that Miss Weber fucking banished him to another planet at this point because I didn't even see him around town in the summertime or anything. Well, as I'm giving him a hug behind me, I hear Miss Weber yell, hey, hands to yourself. Like girl, come on, you've literally fucking, you put this man in a fucking prison somewhere far away and I wanna hug my friend who I haven't seen in years. Like girl, what do you think is gonna happen? Because I hugged him, my mom's gonna go and fuck your husband again? Like leave me out of it. So then everybody in the hallway is just staring at Brent and I, and then, you know, she comes over and she's like, Brent, um, I really think that you should be more worried on figuring out where your classes are than catching up with people. So then Brent rolls his eyes and he's like, I'll see you later. And then of course, Miss Weber goes, ah, probably not because you're gonna be really busy today. You have a lot of catching up to do. Like, girl, bye. Like, I don't think it actually like went through this woman's head that I was not in the office cheering my mom on while she's screwing your husband. I sat in the waiting room, staring at a fucking wall, the clock on the wall, until it was time to leave. Like blame your husband and my mom, not me, thanks. Anyway, so I got super excited whenever I saw that he was in like three of my classes because I was like, yay, finally, we'll have time to catch up and hang out just like old times. So fast forward to first period, the bell rings and the teacher is going over whatever we're learning for that week. And all of a sudden the guidance counselor comes in and she's like, Brent, you're in the wrong class, come with me. Like, bruh. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. 
We have two other classes together. Well, fast forward to second period. Same thing happens. Teacher gets started on the lesson. Guidance, guidance counselor comes in, removes him, says he's in the wrong fucking class. Well, then fast forward to third period, okay? The guidance counselor comes in again, and all you hear is Brent say, oh my god. And everybody's just staring at him like, bro, are you okay? Are you all right? She says the exact same thing again. And then I finally realized that it probably had something to do with me. Like there is no way in hell it's a coincidence that he's getting removed from every single class that I am in with him. So, you know, she's like, Brent, you're in the wrong class. And he's like, bro, I'm not fucking leaving. Everybody was like, oh shit like what the fuck is about to happen what the fuck what the fuck and when i tell you he said exactly like that like he did not care he just sat back in his seat and he's like bro i'm not fucking leaving and then the guidance counselor's like i'm gonna have to get miss weber if you don't come with me he was like go ahead go get my fucking mom go get my mom please i would love to have a conversation with her about this because this is fucking ridiculous he was like Every class that I've been in, they have called my name on the roster to, for attendance. It's not even like he's sitting in there and, you know, they're like, who are you? You're not on my attendance list. You're not on the sheet. So Miss Weber comes and she's like, Brent, grab your things. Let's go. And while she says this, she's staring at me. So everybody in the class is just side-eyeing me. So like three minutes later, I ask if I can go to the bathroom because I actually had to go. I didn't expect them to be talking in the stairwell. So instead of going to the bathroom, I eavesdrop the fuck. Like clearly this has to do with me, bitch. Clearly, like fake as fuck, say it to my face, ho. Anyway, so I'm standing outside the stairwell door and I'm listening to what they're talking about. And of course it's me. Cause I'm so popular. And she's like, Brent, listen, I don't want you around her. Her and her mother almost ruined our family. And then he cut her off and he was like, mom, hold the fuck up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a damn minute. Her mom and my dad almost ruined our families. Okay, not her, your husband and her mom. Like your guys' drama has nothing to do with us. Stop dragging us into your bullshit. And I'm like, fucking period Brent go off on that hoe go off because you know what it's not fair that I keep being blamed for shit that was, was not my fault and you got your son away from all of the fucking drama he didn't have to deal with people talking about his dad cheating on his mom you know because he got to go to school far away Meanwhile, I was stuck with all the rumors so she must have had an inkling that I was listening or something because she just went out the fucking doorway and she was like, excuse me, you need to be in class. Go. So then Brent was like, mom, I'm done with this conversation. I'm going back to class. And then he just walks away with me and she starts on her bullshit. And she's like, Brent, that's not your class. And he's like, well, you can make it my class because I'm staying here. And like I said, I was just in fucking shock because my thing is, is like the Brent that I knew, clearly the little kid Brent that I knew, not the teenager Brent, was a fucking mommy's boy to the max, okay? Like, anytime his friends would be like, oh my god, like, let's do this, you know, because little boys always like to do, like, daredevil things, you know, fucking disobey everybody. He's like, no, my mom will be mad at me. And he would just literally stand and watch everybody else. He wouldn't even actually stay in the vicinity. He would go somewhere else and watch. He wanted no part in any bullshit that would get his mommy mad at him. So um, Brett and I sat next to each other in class and then Miss Weber walked in and she was like, I need to speak to you in the hallway. And she grabs the teacher. The teacher and her are out there for five minutes. You know, everybody's fucking around, you know, laughing, yelling, running around the room. And the teacher comes back in. She's like, everybody settle down. Um, Brent, I need you up here with me. You're gonna sit in the front. And he was like, let me guess, my mom told you to move me. And she just gave this look, yeah. So then, you know, fast forward to the end of class, um, everybody's standing by the door, him and I are talking, he's like, listen, my mom doesn't want me talking to you. And then the bell rings and we all just run off to our next class. And I was literally like ready to cry because like this shit was so unfair to me. So at the end of the day, I'm grabbing my book bag out of my locker and I see a note in my locker that Brent left me and it had his phone number on it and he was like FaceTime me whenever you get home. And y'all, I cannot tell y'all how fucking happy I was. Like the smile on my face. Miss Weber saw me, she saw me smiling ear to ear and it probably pissed her the fuck off. So I text him and I'm like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, hey, don't FaceTime me until later on because my mom's up my ass right now. So later on that night, I FaceTime him and we're just pretty much catching up on life. 
because we haven't talked in four fucking years. He was saying that, you know, he talked to his mom. She's gonna leave us alone. You know, like it's been four years since the situation. It's time to put the past in the past. And then, you know, um, during this time, I wanna say since school started, my mom and I have been looking for a different place to live in town because we didn't really live in a good area. And my mom, she was making more money. So we wanted to move into a new place that was on a nicer side of town. So I was telling him about how we're looking for a place to live. And then he was telling me how his parents owned this one house like 10 minutes down the street for him and they're running it out super cheap because the old renters moved out like seven months ago and they just want to get somebody in there for the extra money so you know we you know those things that you talk about with your friends and they never actually happen like starting a business and then you know you guys never talk about it ever again yeah this was one of those moments where we, you know it was a nice thought but we just knew there was no no way in hell and it definitely wasn't a good idea to bring it up um but since miss weber decided to lay the fuck off um brent and i were allowed to hang out outside of school finally um brent was only allowed to hang out with me when i was at my dad's house like if he wanted to come over and see me it had to be while i was at my dad's house but i was still going to my mom's only on the weekends so brent and i obviously wanted to hang out on the weekends you know in the end i will say miss weber really loves her fucking kid and you know she really cares about him and how he feels because he talked to her and she was like fine you can go over there on the weekends you know so it's the weekend and Brent and I are hanging out at my mom's house and we're all in the kitchen eating lunch and my mom's talking about how she found a place that's like three hours away and obviously Brent and I were like what the fuck like what do you mean it's three hours away mom and then that's whenever Brent's like um well my parents have this property that they're looking to rent out so I guess my mom had been looking on all the main websites you know for renting places out you know like Zillow, whatever the fuck else, apartments.com or something, something, I don't know. But he pulled up the website that his parents had it listed on and it was like some unfucking known website. Like they literally put it on like the most random fucking website in the world. It, lo it looks like a scam. That's literally what it looks like. So Brent pulls it up and my mom actually really likes the place and she's like, the only issue is your parents would never ever, at least your mom would never rent this to me. And then Brent's like, well, you could just have somebody else, you know, apply for you. He was like, that's what my parents did with my brother for his apartment at college. They just applied for him and then, yeah. So fast forward, my grandma applies for my mom and she goes, looks at the apartment and my mom and grandma didn't have the last, the same last name. So there's no way that Brent's parents would have known. But um, yeah, she signed the lease and bam, three days later is moving day. So after school, Brent came over to my house and he helped us, he was helping us move shit in the apartment. I keep saying apartment because we were renting, but it was a house, so yeah. Um, but of course, nothing can just go as planned or go smoothly in our lives. Um, Miss Weber dropped by the house and I guess she had forgot to give him my give my grandma the key to the back door. So she shows up and she freaks the fuck out. She, oh my God, she almost had an aneurysm when she walked up, when she pulled up and saw that it was us. Oh, 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 you wanna get fucked up. Like she must have saw us from down the street actually because all of a sudden we heard her speed up and just whip into the driveway. Fucking throwing gravel everywhere and shit. Like be careful, the fuck. So she's like, um, excuse me. She's like, where's Amy? She was like the person who is on the lease for this house. Where is she? And my mom's like, oh, like, um, that's my mom, blah, blah, blah. Like, we're also going to be living here with her. And she's like, absolutely fucking not. Absolutely not. So then Brent pulls his mom aside again. And we're just standing there. We're not even moving anything else into the apartment. Because, like, we're not sure if we're going to get, like, fucking evicted or not. So Brent comes back and he's like, hey, like um, my mom just needs to calm down, but I have to go with her. So, you know, and then my mom was like, well, are we good to keep moving our shit in? And he's like, yeah, you're fine. But just to be sure, my mom literally just kept everything in boxes. And later on that night, my mom and I were sitting at the island in the kitchen eating dinner and Miss Weber calls my mom. And before she picks up the phone, she's like, good thing we didn't unpack anything. I think we're about to be evicted, which honestly I thought too. Surprise, surprise though, that was actually not the case at all. Um, Miss Weber was like, listen, I just want to put this shit in the past. 
okay? Like clearly we're gonna be in each other's lives longer than I had hoped, but we need to figure out some type of way to be cordial. And my mom didn't really care that I was listening to the conversation, so I heard really everything that they were talking about. But I felt bad for Miss Weber because my mom just acted like she wasn't in the wrong. And I know for a fact my mom never apologized for sleeping with her husband. But yeah, my mom was like, listen, like we can be cordial. We could, we could be cordial right now but I'm not gonna have you holding my child accountable for the shit that's going on between adults, okay? You need to leave my kid the fuck alone. That's what needs to happen first. I was like, damn, okay, mom, you're kind of a shitty person, but okay. And like I said earlier, my mom is one of those people where somehow you end up apologizing for shit that she did wrong. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so fast forward, we move in, and Mr. Weber, aka Brent's dad, would drop him off, pick him up, and my mom would still fucking flirt with him. She would go outside to the car whenever he would drop her drop Brent off or come and pick him up and she would fucking flirt with him. Are you serious right now, bro? What the fuck? I would literally have to yell at this bitch and be like, mom, do you not know? Are you completely oblivious to all the problems your actions have caused me? Like leave him the fuck alone. He's a married man. Let him cheat with somebody else. Get on fucking Bumble, bitch. Like shit is literally just starting to get better for me and she wants to sit there and act like a selfish ass bitch acting like I wasn't getting called a slut and a whore at school because of her. Anyway, so the next two years, Brent and I get super close. Well, at least the closest that we could with the situation that we were in. Because don't get me wrong, everything was better than it was before, but there was still a lot of animosity and a lot of tension. Yes. Like everything was completely fine whenever Brent would come over to my house because my mom acted like she didn't do shit wrong. She'd be like, oh, hey Brent, you know, how are you? And Brent didn't really give a fuck about the situation in general. So he didn't really care, you know, he was fine with my mom. But then when I would go over their house, it was awkward. It was awkward between me and Mr. Weber because he fucked my mom. And then it was awkward be between Miss Weber and I because she resented me because of my mom. Yeah, but within the two years, you know, he had a few girlfriends, I had a few boyfriends, and I wasn't allowed to hang out with him anytime that he was in a relationship. It wasn't even really because of the girlfriend, it was mainly because of his mom. I mean, the girlfriend still didn't want us hanging out because of my mom's reputation. You know the saying, like daughter, like mother, or like mother, like daughter, however the fuck it goes, that was people's mindsets. But yeah, his mom was like, I don't want you hanging out with her if you have a girlfriend. You're not about to turn out like your father. But finally, him and I are both single. We're going on dates and stuff like that. We're not in a relationship. We're taking things extremely slow, okay? But now, of course, as soon as I think my life got easy, it didn't. No, 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 no. Life just fucking throws another curveball at me, like right at my fucking neck, you know? Of course. So fast forward to my birthday, Brett and I were supposed to hang out that night. We were gonna hang out during the day, but he ended up having to go to work, so you know. So after I celebrated with my mom in the morning, I went over to my dad's house. My mom and I didn't really celebrate too much because she was low key in a little bit of a depression. Um, She was dating this guy for like a year and she was literally in love with him. What happened? He cheated on her. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> yes, karma's a bitch. Yes, it is. Yup. So anyways, like I said, I went over to my dad's house and I celebrated with him and my stepmom. And then I had already turned 16, but this was like my official birthday party type shit, you know? Cause I didn't want to celebrate it on my actual birthday until I got my license. So my dad, he bought me a car. I was so excited because now I was gonna drive Brent and I to all the activities that we had planned for later that night. You know, it's a Saturday night. We're about to get shit popping. So I leave my dad's house and I drive to my mom's and I see Brent's car outside and I see my mom's car outside, but all the lights in the house are off. So I'm a little bit weirded out. I'm like, okay, maybe they're on the back porch or something like that, you know, whatever. So I walk around the back porch, back porch life is off and all the doors are locked. And of course I leave my spare key at home because my mom said that she was gonna be home all fucking day. So then I'm getting worried that something might've happened to them. So I call Miss Weber and I'm like, hey, um, is there any way that you could possibly bring the spare key? Um, Brent and my mom's cars he are here, but nobody's answering the door. Nobody's answering the phone. Yeah, and I called them like a million fucking times, left voicemails, texted them. Like that just keeps being my mom's downfall. Like bitch, answer your fucking phone. Are you deaf? The fuck? So she's like, you're sure nobody's answering? And I was like, yes, nobody is fucking answering. And Miss Weber tried to stay as far away from my mom as possible, okay? Like she didn't wanna be near that bitch at all. So she was like, all right, um, call the police just in case and I'm about to be on my way. So I call the police, I'm standing at the door. Um, Miss Weber shows up before the police and she opens the door with the key and you know, 
we're yelling we run upstairs and that's when we hear a lot of moving upstairs and um we walk in my mom's room and yeah uh brent's putting his like hurrying up to put his clothes on my mom you know she's in the bathroom and yeah open the door and i see a condom laying on the ground next to the bed of course so we both start screaming miss weber's trying to break the fucking door down um the police are like trying to you know calm her down um she decides that she wants to press charges against my mom rightfully so uh i was like way too out of it to drive that night so my dad came and picked me up and my mom went to jail that night obviously after this i had to move in with my dad um i never ever spoke to brent ever again like i was just so fucking embarrassed after the whole situation like i just can't believe he fucking did that to me after he knew all the shit that i had been through the past few years because of my mom well you know new rumors in school my mom likes kids um i'm a slut and a whore just like my mom i'm gonna grow up just to be like her like these rumors were just way too much for me to handle so i ended up switching to online school so yeah, um, a little update, I guess. It's been three years since I've talked to my mom, mainly because like she, well, because of what she did. And she would literally always be like, oh my God, you two are so cute. I just know you guys are gonna get married and have kids. And she knew how much I liked him, but she still decided to be selfish as fuck. Okay, everybody, that is the end of today's story time. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me, hit that subscribe button down below. And like I said earlier, the story time link, it's not working right now. I will update you guys on here whenever I fix the link. So just make sure that you have your notifications on. But other than that, I will see you guys next week with a new story time.